Lesson number 117 is about equations with x squared and the Pythagorean theorem. Now our first problem says to solve. p squared is equal to 16. If we want to solve this problem, that means find out what the value of p is to make this equation true. Well, what number squared equals 16? That's like saying what number times itself is equal to 16. And the answer, we can see, it must be 4 because 4 times 4 is equal to 16. So we could say p is equal to 4. But before you move too quickly to box your answer, there's another possibility. Can you think of what other number times itself is equal to positive 16? Well, perhaps you said negative 4, because negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. So p could be equal to 4, or p could be equal to negative 4. When we have these problems that say some number squared, we're always going to get two answers because the square part makes it so we'll have a positive answer and a negative answer. So we could write our answer like this, or we could say p is equal to, and a neat symbol would be to say p is equal to plus or minus 4. And then we could write it like that. Both answers are correct. The bottom one's a little bit quicker to write. That's how I would do it, and you're welcome to as well. Let's look at another problem with an x squared or p squared type of equation. Let's solve. a squared is equal to 42. Well, do you know what number times itself is equal to 42? Well, that's a good question. It's a hard one because it's not a whole number answer. So if it's not a whole number answer, we don't want to write it as a decimal. In order to figure out what we have, we could look back at our last example. If we have p squared is equal to 16, the way we found that was with mental math. But an alternative way would be to take the square root of both sides to undo the square. And the square root of 16 is 4. So we could have said p is equal to 4, and it could be positive or negative. So if we look at that same logic here, let's go ahead and undo the square by taking the square root. Then we're going to take the square root of 42. Now, the square root of 42 is still not a whole number. It's still a decimal. And I know I just said that you shouldn't report your answer as a decimal. So a problem like this is actually very nice because we're going to get a is equal to the square root of 42. And this is how we want to leave it. We do not want to turn this into a decimal. But it's got to be the positive version or the negative version. So here's our answer. a is equal to plus or minus the square root of 42. This problem is actually more simple than the last problem we had because in the last problem we had, we had to simplify the square root of 16 to get 4 since it's a perfect square. Since the square root of 42 is not a perfect square, we just leave it as the square plus or minus the square root of that number. Let's move on to, a next, to our next problem. The Pythagorean theorem. This theorem is one you may have seen it before, and it says a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And we always use the Pythagorean theorem on right triangles. And the Pythagorean theorem will help us to find unknown side lengths when we work with right triangles. Now, if we were looking at a right triangle like this that's marked a, b, and c, this formula works because a squared, well, a squared, that would be like making a square out of a. So we take a's side length and we make a square. Plus b squared, so we take b and we square it, so we take its side length and make a square. a squared plus b squared, however many units there are in those two together, will be equal to the number of units in c squared. So we take our line c, or our segment c, we make a square out of it. You can see our c squared is the biggest, it always will be. And that's the sum of our a squared and our b squared. Let's go ahead and look at how we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to a couple of examples. Given the triangle below, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the value of a. 
So we know the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So if we want to find the value of a, we need to make a square out of a. Looks like we're going to run just short on room here. We'll do our best. We're going to make a square out of 4. And we're going to make a square out of 5. These can just be a sketch. 5 squared, we know that's 25. 4 squared, we know that's 16. So, what number plus 16 is equal to 25? Well, that must be 9. So a squared is equal to 9. So what must a be? What number squared is equal to 9? Well, a must be equal to 3, because 3 squared is 9. So a is equal to 3. And we've got the answer to our problem. Using these square units, or these squares, is very helpful for solving. Because our two legs, or the short sides, leg and a leg, a is the short leg, b is the longer leg, will always be equal to our longest side, which is called the hypotenuse, when we add the two legs together. So the leg plus the leg, when they're both squared, we get the answer of our hypotenuse squared, and that can help us figure out any missing number problem when we're working with right triangles by using the Pythagorean theorem. Let's look at another example. Here we want to find M. What we need to identify is which ones are our legs and which ones are our hypotenuse. Well, the legs always join at a right angle. And we can see M kind of looks like the short side. So we could say A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And in this case, instead of drawing out our picture, we're going to use our formula to solve. So, well, it looks like the m is the short side, so that should be our a squared. We'll call it m squared. Plus b squared, that's our other leg, that's going to be 7 squared, is equal to our hypotenuse, our longest side, that's 9 squared. Now if we go through the math here, we're going to see, and we're going to work over on the top right now, m squared plus 7 squared, that's 49, because 7 times 7 is 49. It's going to be equal to 9 squared. 9 times 9, that's 81. Now to find m squared, we're going to subtract 49 from both sides. That leaves us with m squared is equal to, we'll borrow from the 8 to get 7, 11 minus 9 is 2, and 7 minus 4 is 3. So let's rewrite that neater. m squared is equal to 32. Now what number times itself, or what number squared, is equal to 32? Well, there's no whole number answer. So that's actually really nice, because that means we just need to take the square root to undo the square. Then we need to take the square root to balance out our equation. So we've got our answer. m must be equal to the square root of 32. Now, in this lesson, we talked about having problems where we solve, like this, where we have a squared, and we get a positive answer and a negative answer. But in this case, we only report the positive answer because we're talking about a distance. Again, remember, we don't want to simplify these squares that are not perfect to decimal numbers. We just want to leave them as square roots. Lesson practice will be on page 370. Make sure you've got your notes complete, and I'll see you during our next class.